Okay, so uh, it's the next day now. I did some stitching last night, uh, as we discussed. Um, I stitched on both rows for the cap toe, as you can see. One below the broguing, one above the broguing. Uh, it doesn't look quite as nice in the back. You can see how it's kind of like a little uneven in places just because like when I poke it through, like I'm not doing it perfectly straight up and down level every single time. And that's a, it was a little bit of laziness just because I know this is not gonna show. And also uh, I just need to get better at it in general. Um, it definitely makes it a little less obvious about the uh, the one broking hole that's messed up. I did one thing I did forget to do was clear out all these holes with a heated awl before uh, stitching it all up. So they have a little bit of like leather gunk in them now. It should kind of blend in over time. And then I uh, I stitched the back of this up using that cross on the outside, the cross this way on the inside, and you can see that it took that shape of the back of the boot. And this part's gonna fold under the boot. It's gonna kind of be like this. This is a little dramatic for what it actually needs to be for the last, um, but I'm hoping it'll stretch out properly. Uh, the other one's the same too, and I put it around the last, and it seems to, to fit pretty well. And the one thing I didn't talk about is I, I sewed this uh, piece onto the throat of this. I mean, it's the same exact process, except this time I glued it down and I used uh, these little alligator clips to hold it in place. So basically, I took uh, my barge cement, uh, put it on the back of this strip, and then carefully placed it inside the throat of this boot and kept it closed like this because this is going to be the natural shape of the boot. It's not going to be flat out like this. It can hold, lay flat out, but uh, we wanted to kind of want to pull close a little bit and it will make a slight change, a difference. And then I just clipped it in. I let it glue for an hour or whatever, just to set. <clears throat> and then I just did the thing where I went through, bop, 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 poked all the holes on this. I went, I started here, it's hard to see. I started here on this one and went across, but on the bottom one, I went all the way over here because that's because when we come now and sew this thing, I'm gonna start down here, I'm gonna come all the way up here, I'm gonna go around and then I'm gonna cross over. So I am gonna cover those holes and then come back down here. So I didn't want to like go over those holes twice and I'm never going to hit those holes again. So that's why I did that. <clears throat> and uh, that's actually two steps from now. The next step is going to be attaching the heel cap. So the thing you're going to notice with the heel cap is that if I lay it flat, it's going to be wider than that other piece down there which is not good because we need to still stitch in there. But when this is bent around the back of this thing, we're gonna be fitting another piece of leather in there. So uh, it needs to bend around this thing. And as it bends around, you're gonna notice now that it's not as short because it's traveling around the back of that thing. So uh, we're gonna wanna stitch it so it lands actually sort of about like this with those just showing. But uh, we're not gonna stitch that bot. We're not gonna like go gung-ho right away in stitching every single hole, poking every single hole in this piece because uh, we, like the nice thing about one of these boots is that it has like this cool shape on the back. It has a lot of shape to the throw of the boot. It just, it's not just a flat line down. It's gonna arch out uh, where the heel goes. You know, it's a good look. and. Then it comes in tight right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch on this and we're gonna keep it as tight as possible. I'm gonna lay it flat actually, I'm not gonna do the curves. And keep it as tight as possible down till about there, till about the top of this bump starts. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna actually get two sets of needles started. I don't know, this is probably not the right way to do it. Oh, and uh, Cool news, I ended up getting a sewing machine today off of Craigslist for a hundred bucks that works wonderfully. And I uh, actually was able to get a FAF 130, which uh, is all steel gears. It's made from the 1930s, but it's still like cranking away. And I was able to uh, take the heel cap that I messed up on 
and fold it over and it was able to do just stitch through this like a champ. It takes a second to get started and I'm definitely need practice because it goes a little bit fast for what my skills are. I was kind of like panicking and just cranking across the whole thing. Um, but it will power through it. It'll make the stitch. I need to get some leather tip needles also first before I really try to do anything. But I also put it through uh, some of this like 10 ounce veg tan and it poked through. I didn't have the needle threaded when I did it. Uh, but I was pleasantly surprised. Like, I started it with my hand. I hand cranked to the wheel, and it went through. And then it, as soon as it got a little bit of momentum going, it finished off the stitch. It had a little trouble moving the leather. I might have to get a Teflon foot for it. But, yeah, happy with that. It's using the original motor, too, which is crazy. I could, I might upgrade the motor in the future to something with a little more power so it doesn't have that issue with me having to start it by hand. But, anyway. That's not really on topic. So I'm still doing this boot by hand because I did the other boot by hand. I will not be doing this one with the machine at all. Um, yeah, but anyway, I'm going to start one needle all the way up here at the top. And I'm going to come down and come down to about here. And then I'm going to start one needle over in this corner. And I'm going to come down to about here. And the only reason I'm doing that is just because uh, I don't want to start over here and come up here and then have to start another one over here. Uh, just a little bit of symmetry to the whole thing. Um, and the other thing I mentioned in the previous video was like, or one of the previous videos, I said, uh, oh, be sure you use similar colored thread because it's high contrast, or you don't want high contrast there because you're going to be able to notice it and all that stuff. But I guess what I forgot to mention was that... Um, you know, you might want to have it high contrast. Even if your stitching doesn't look perfect, like mine doesn't, like you can tell I, this, where is it? Uh, that stitch right there is a little bit wonky. I angled it too much. I slipped a little bit and put it up a little higher. Um, even if you know, it does look a little wonky, some people, you know, like that as part of the handmade charm. I definitely have some things where I like, yeah, you know, you can tell it's handmade, but there's a little bit of perfection to it and uh, that can be just as impressive like on a pair of boots people if you want to really show off the fact that you hand stitch to the whole thing go for a high contrast thread let people ask why your threads a little bit wonky and then you know tell them hey I stitched this whole thing by hand um because these these stitches do look really nice when you get them right there are sections on this cap toe that like I feel like I got the stitching very very solid like right through there and it's a cool look and if it was a bright color of thread on this dark dark green uh i think it would look very cool but it's not consistent so i went with color match thread uh but yeah so i gotta go find my cork i think i took it in the other room when i was awling stuff because i was watching tv at the same time um I do that. Oh yeah, and if you hear some squeaking, I uh, I'm wearing a apron that I made. Let's take a better look at it. Uh, I don't particularly need it for this uh, job, just because I'm not. It's not a lot of dye or anything, uh, but it is gonna be handy when I'm working with the sharp knives, um, just because it it's made out of uh, maybe four ounce bridle, I think, uh, three or four ounce bridle, and it's going to offer a little bit of protection in case you slip with a knife, because uh, there will be some difficult bits, here's my cork, there will be some d difficult bits uh, going on with a knife where you're going to be, even if your knife is really sharp, you're going to be pulling it pretty hard, and I mean, it's obviously not going to like, save your ass if you stab yourself with a knife knife's gonna go through it because you know the knife is designed to cut leather but uh, there is you know a chance it would slow things down a little bit um, nice thing to have is especially if you're going to be working with dyes I mean when we end up doing the the sole of the shoe uh, I'm going to be 
using some, you can see where it saved my ass from some dye right there. Um, and I also use it for gardening. Uh, it's nice to keep the dirt off your clothes. And cooking. It's good for oil. The oil doesn't make it through this thing. Um, yeah, sorry. It, uh, I'm going to be using some edgy coat on the edge of the shoes. I don't want to get out of my clothes. Also, like I have it on the snaps right here. So you can snap around the back strap to keep it taut. And then these snaps wrap around my back in a cross pattern. Um, I had it originally just wrapped it like a one loop that dropped over my neck. But it was putting, this is actually kind of a heavy apron, so it was putting a lot of weight on my neck. So I switched over to a cross pattern on the back. But anyway, just one of those things that you should probably have, probably end up making. Uh, but anyway, on the back of this shoe, I'm gonna end up doing this top row of holes, not into this. Oh yeah, this is actually what I did on the last one. I completely forgot. So I, I poked these, this top row of holes and then I lined them up with these existing holes already on this back plate and I stitched them into place. That way this thing is held into place nice and tight and in this proper spot when I finally do go all out, all out. Uh, no, going all AWL out these little holes right here, down here. And so I'll stitch across, keep the thread nice and long, and measure out as much thread as I need to do the whole thing. And uh, then do that. And making sure I keep my all pointed the same way on every one. And speaking of which, I should have my all. them and all that shit but yeah so I'm gonna come right in here and go yeah you don't want to get these too high up or too close to the edge because then you run the risk of uh, of your the top edge of this heel cap not meeting up with the top edge of your the throat of your boot uh it's easier to trim off a little bit of the top of this heel cap than try to trim off all the top of the boot oh wow these are some bad stitches i messed up a few of those but anyway it's done i was trying to do a little bit below that line because to illustrate what i'm saying so if i if I stitch it down, I have the holes too high up here, it might stitch down kind of like that. I mean, not that bad, but it could stitch down like that, where it's kind of an ugly little ridge right there. But if it stitches up and there's like a little bit of this sticking out, I can just trim that off really easily. So, what happens now is that I'm gonna go stitch this through here, make sure this is dead center on this piece. I'm even gonna count holes just to make sure I get it right. Stitch it down. Then once that's stitched down, I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna flatten this out. I'm just gonna do a demo right now just so I don't have to do it on camera. Flatten it out, poke holes all the way till it's about level with the top of this bump. Do it on the other side too. Then I'm gonna stitch this out with the thread that's already in there. Put in a new thread, stitch it out over here. Then once that's all stitched out, I will be back to make another video because I'll show you how we're measuring it out to get it symmetrical with the other boot and just to make sure that it's uh, curving with the boot properly over here.